Domondi Otieno. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on KUTV Primetime News. Remember you can share your thoughts with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, KUTV Kenya and on Twitter, KUTV underscore Kenya. We dive deep into the discussion tonight. No one is born a good citizen and no nation is born a democracy. It is the youth that give any society its dynamic core. There is therefore a growing need for the youth to be actively involved in governance of the country. According to statistics, the youth make three quarters of the population in Kenya and are a great potential of the, source, uh, of the social and economic energy for the country. Yet, much of this energy is untapped. Tonight, we are joined by Shadrach T.J. Omondi to help us break down the youth agenda, how we can foster intergenerational dialogue that will ensure the future of the youth is not at stake. Shadrach, welcome to KUTV. Maybe introduce yourself to our uh, dear viewers. Yes. They get to know who Shadrach is. Good evening, viewers. Uh, my name is Shadrach TJ Omondi Magakini. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. And well, I'm happy to be here uh, tonight for this discussion. I'm a passionate young advocate. Uh, I believe in the youth agenda, and it's time that the youth should take up their rightful position in the society and to champion for their interests. Thank you so much, Shadrach, for advocating your time for us to be with us tonight. Let's jump into the discussion now. Tell us who are considered to be the youth according to the Kenyan constitution. Well, our constitution uh, defines the youth at uh, Article 260. We call it the interpretation clause of the constitution. Mm -hmm. It defines the youth as people that have attained the age of 18 where, and at the same time below the age of 35. All right. Um, and uh, we are on politics. Yes. Now, as far as politics is concerned, what is the position of the youth in the country? Um, uh, generally, uh, all Kenyans can see it for themselves. In Kenya, the youth are unfortunately flower girls. They are only used during demonstrations. They are only used during picketing. They are only used as goons. They are only used as thugs, which is a very bad uh, atmosphere. However we have cure to that problem. So Shadrach, what could be the cure to this? As you're saying, the youths, you're terming them as flower girls in the you know, political scene of the country. What could be the cure of this? How can we make, uh, uh, how can the country tap into that full potential that is in the youth that is untapped in, at the moment? Uh, majority of people have already said that Kenyans have very good laws. I want to tell you here tonight, we have a total of 21 pieces of legislation on right. the youth alone. Right. The biggest of them being the constitution. Our constitution has an elaborate chapter on the youth, starting with Article 55, Article 56, and then our preamble. All these talk about what should be the rightful position of the youth. For instance, the youth are supposed to access education. Number two, the youth are supposed to access jobs. Number three, the youth are supposed to be involved in the decision-making table. Unfortunately, this does not happen. Now, what should we do? Because right. the question is, what should be the cure? What should be the, the cure, cure is just one. Right. We need political goodwill. Political goodwill. Maybe try to elaborate to us, how does this political goodwill come into play in solving the problem that we have with the youth in governance in Kenya? Uh, good question. Like I've explained, we have a lot of uh, legislative uh, framework, a very good elaborate legislative framework for the youth. Right. We have uh, the constitution, we have the national youth policy, we have the uh, ways of fund, we have the women enterprise fund, we have the public procurement and asset disposal act. Now all these legislations, for us to uh, get their fruit, we must have somebody at the helm that will ensure that the youth access this. Now, this is what we call political goodwill. Now, right. we need a government yes. that is responsive to the needs of the youth. Now, on policies of government, of, on policies and uh, governance in the country, we find that the older people, they hold de facto positions in this decision-making 
uh, you know, processes of the country. How does we how how can we bring in the youth on these positions so that they can also represent themselves? They can air out the issues that they have and you know make a plan to their future as they are in as much as yes they are youth in the country. Now we need a full realization and implementation of the chapters that I've talked to you about yes. in the constitution. Right. Now a very good avenue for youth uh, participation and realization of the full potential of the youth is what we call devolution. Devolution. Now, I want to give you two examples uh, of places or counties in Kenya where the youth have enjoyed their rights as a start in the constitution. The first county is Wasingishu. Wasingishu. Tonight as we speak, 20, 51 students have been selected by the uh, county government of Wasingishu to go and take diploma courses in Finland. Right. Now that is a, a very good example where the youth can realize their potential. You see, most employers have always been arguing that we have a mismatch in terms of skills, that whatever universities are churning out as graduates yes. don't really respond to the needs of the employer. Right. Now, how do we help it? We have created TVET uh, colleges, we have created uh, polytechnics, but then after somebody has gone to those polytechnics, do they, do they get jobs? No, they don't. Okay. Now come to McQueen County. McQueenie, they have something called McQueenie Youth Policy of 2019. Right. Now, that policy, um, beneath it, we have something called the McQueenie Youth Empowerment Service. They call it MES. Mm -hmm. Under that uh, empowerment service, the governor engages the youth directly. They sit down, they, uh, we have sat tonight, they discuss, they get to know what is the, the problem facing uh, the youth and then they get addressed. Now, even if you look at the, 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 the architecture of the governance in McQueenie, we have a lot of youths sitting as CCs in, right. in the cabinet of, of, of uh, the, the governor. So that is how we can realize this. Number two, the government has been championing the big four agenda. Now, let's just talk about uh, affordable housing. Affordable housing. Majority of youth have been to this thing called Mjengo. Tell me, in a single building, how many youth do you always have there? And if a government were to uh, uh, enroll a, a massive housing project, how many youth will be employed? We shall have sol solved that problem maybe by half. Now, uh, you see, Shadrach, youth unemployment you know, is a global menace that is faced in developing countries and many other parts of the, uh, of the world. How can we, as uh, Kenyans, we are headed to this period where decision making is going to be made and uh, policies, new policies are going to be, you know, brought to place. How can we as Kenyans headed to elections find a leeway to this problem? The first thing is the youth, um, they make a majority of the, uh, the young people, they need to be guided. Yes. So the first responsibility is on the state, the government. The government must provide that avenue for the youth to have uh, their, their views aired, for the youth to participate effectively, not just participating, it must be effective participation. In that ambit, we have also something called political parties. Political parties must also ensure that they fund and sponsor youth so that the youth can get what is called effective representation. Although our constitution provides that we should have uh, nominated two youth in the county assembly, in the national assembly, and in the senate, when we look at them today, we don't see any face of the youth. So the state has a responsibility. Number two, we have stakeholders. We have NGOs, we have CBOs, we have a, a, pri a, a private sector. They should also have a responsibility in ensuring that the youth have their voices heard. Then the last point is on the youth themselves. It is said that power is grabbed, it is not given. They must forcefully take their right position. And in, in that forceful uh, taking of, of power, they should use legitimate means. How do they use legitimate le means? Mm -hmm. The youth should be system, systematic in um, only voting for fellow youth. For instance, we have these things called chamas, chamas, even for the youth. It is the youth that lead these organizations, and they have been doing so well. So why can't the youth themselves appoint among them people that can represent them in higher decision-making platforms? Now, Shadrach, 2022 general elections are looming, and we've seen leaders campaigning. They are really yearning to win the hearts of the youths. Now, how can youths uh, come into place? How can they really evaluate what these politicians are saying. How can they evaluate their, you know, manifesto to find that this now is the right candidate for us? This is now whom we should be standing behind.
The first point is that uh, we don't have manifesto politics in Kenya. Yes, unfortunately. The Kenyan politics is tribal and it is very local. So anybody talking about manifesto, first of all, might not even win election, and secondly, might not be so uh, popular. So that is the first unfortunate uh, issue. The second issue is that uh, uh, t today over 3,000 uh, 3, uh, students are supposed to report to university without help. Yes. And you remember, uh, two, two to three days ago, MPs refused to uh, pass a bill that was supposed to ensure that uh, help was released to uh, students. So the first question people should be asking uh, these uh, legislators that are coming to them yes. is, what have you done in the last five years yes. to champion the youth agenda? All right. Unfortunately, they might not even have that answer. But maybe to cut you short on that, yes. uh, Wakili. We're saying uh, we should be asking them what have they done to Kenyans to yes. deserve their votes. Yes. Now, you see, this uh, is it in a way, you, uh, could it be in a way locking out people who have never served in the government? Because what will we be asking them? They've never served in the government. Yes. Now, how will we evaluate them? How will we, you know, try to give them a chance if they have not served in any capacity? Yes. The first question was on politicians yes. trying to woo. Uh, the youth. Now, anybody who has never served, yeah. there are a lot of other avenues yes. that you can show service. We must see your fruits. Yes. For instance, I've seen a lot of aspiring uh, candidates having foundations. Yes. Some leading in uh, street cleaning and environmental consciousness. Some leading in uh, champions, championing education. Now, we should ask, what have you done? We should not just give you leadership on a silver platter. But uh, on asking this, what have you done? You will find uh, someone who has been in government yes. has done something, yes. which is uh, relatively, if you compare to someone who is coming fresh into the game, yes. has done something little. Yes. So how do you gauge the two? How do you validate that this guy has done much and deserves yes. to be voted yes. in, and this guy has done a little but still deserves to be voted in? So how do you vet that? The, the, the thing is, Kenyans are very intelligent. They will know that somebody was given all the leeway, was given all the opportunity to do something, and they did so little. So that one does not deserve a chance. Right. Yes. Now, uh, you mentioned at a point that Kenyans don't vote based on manifestos. Yes. Kenyans boast on uh, the tribal, you know, the ethnic affiliations. Yes. And we, I think it's time that, uh, because a lot has happened, time has really changed. And uh, among this change, we should be changing, getting away from voting on based on this, you know, uh, ethnic affiliations. Yes. How do we get our youth out of this? Because uh, there are people who are, you know, easy to learn. People who are, you know, they can bring change to themselves and to their future generations. How do we get them out of this voting based on uh, political, you know, ethnic affiliations? That one will take time. You right. see, uh, there have been candidates that have been running for elections since 97. They might probably be running for elections in the next 20 years. And uh, most of them are uh, heavily loaded in terms of uh, political capital, in terms of finance, in terms of popularity. So getting them out of the scene will take a tall order. Probably it might need a revolution. Now, the only thing the youth can do is to take the systemic step that I was talking about to decide to only elect fellow youth. That one might change it. But if we continue uh, recycling the old guards that have been in the political scene, then it will take a long time. Unfortunately, several years before we could get into politics of policies and manifesto. For instance, let me ask you. You've had uh, the, 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 the current government, they, they had a very good manifesto. Yes. For instance, they had a very good manifesto on the youth. The first thing they said is that they were going to connect all major cities to Wi-Fi. Secondly, they said that they were going to get us a lot, total of nine stadia. Another thing is that they, they, they promised a million jobs. How many of those have been fulfilled? Very few. I, I don't want to speculate on that, but uh, you know, <laughs> Kenyans are you, as you say, Kenyans are intelligent. Yes. Kenyans are intelligent. So they will make the right decision. They will make the right decision. Yes. Now, uh, you've uh, mentioned at, uh, something at some point that um, we have leaders who have run, uh, you know, for political seats uh, from time, should we say, time immemorial? Yes. And they can still run for the next 20 years. Yes. Now, how can the youth get a chance also to, you know, represent other youths on this? Because you find even on the uh, the apex position yes. in leadership in Kenya, there is an age limit. Yes. Uh, that means uh, what 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 is the age limit? And this age limit, I guess, it's really limiting 
uh, youths in coming into play on these uh, you know positions yes. don't you think our policies in a way they also limit the youth on on the potential on what they can do to themselves and to their future generations in fact our 2010 constitution has not placed any age limit and a 18 year old young man can run for president right so there's no age limit so the only question that we need to ask ourselves is which kind or which crop of politicians have the best interest of the youth perhaps if we place a, a better government a government that has uh, the, the goodwill to champion the interests of the youth a government that for instance will ensure that in their political party they have youth or a government that will ensure that in their uh, uh, legislation, legislative agenda, they have youths nominated. Yes. Or in their politics, they also sponsor youths to run for seats. Then that perhaps will be the best government for, for, for youths to, to rally on. But if we leave it the way it is... Total mess. Total mess. All right. Maybe, uh, Shadrach, now that you are in the legal sector, you might be having a third eye than what we, for us, you know, we are practicing on different fields yes. have. Um, we've seen coalitions being formed uh, ahead of these 2022 general elections. Now, can you help us maybe uh, try to evaluate which, which, uh, you, which coalition, um, uh, or rather which uh, leaders who are championing for the top seats have something good for the youth that at least the youth should give them an ear to listen to what they have? Like I said, most of these people who are running have been running for seats since time immemorial. So there are some people, some of them have track records, uh, some of them uh, they, they have uh, stood steadfast in whatever they, they believe in over the time. Some of them have also uh, developed by ideology over the time. But as we speak tonight, Right. There is no coalition that has been formed. There is no political party that has written a manifesto uh, for us to evaluate. And uh, a lot of those candidates have also not declared, uh, that perhaps whether they are running for president or not. So maybe we give it time, a month or two, then we, can, we shall come back and evaluate them. But time, again, time is running out because yes. uh, you see uh, 2022 general elections, they are not so far from, from where we are right now. Yeah. There is, there, that means that there is something that needs to be done. Yes. At least we need to create an avenue to educate the youth on one or two things. Yes. Yeah. So how do we come in? Like you are in the legal sector. Yes. What have you done so far, or rather, what are you doing yes. to ensure that the youth within your within your circle are making the right decisions politically? Yes. Um. I've, I've engaged in a lot of activities. Uh, first of all, uh, there is an organisation that uh, champions uh, the rights of youth against uh, violent extremism. Extremism. I've participated in, in such forums. I've also participated in uh, forums like um, we've always had the International Youth Day, where the youth sit at uh, safe places to discuss issues uh, such as uh, early pregnancies, such as uh, drugs, such as uh, crimes, such as uh, their own participation. Uh, secondly, I've also been involved in, uh, with NGOs uh, that uh, address uh, various uh, capacity building uh, issues for the youth. So, so far, uh, in my small way, I've uh, tried to champion the youth agenda. Uh, that's so great of you, Shadrach. Now, um, still on politics, uh, we are seeing, uh, I, I would want to come back to the policies. Yes interpretation of the policies because you find out that uh, when these policies are being made they try to use uh, some terms um, I don't know whether to say that the youths don't understand what these people are saying or rather what they, they, they don't have a clear interpretation of what these policies mean so how do you come out even on the legal sector to try to help the youth to understand these policies because we saw BBI on uh, uh, recently so we had BBI and uh, not very many could understand what this BBI entail. Yes. Now how do you people come in to ensure that uh, the policies, the you know the legal writings that are to come to play in the country are being understood by everyone at every stage? Oh, the first thing is that uh, in the legal field there is a, a movement for simple English. Right. That is the first thing. Secondly, Perhaps one of the reasons as to why BBI could not see the light of day in uh, both the High Court and the Court of Appeal is on that issue of uh, civic uh, education. Right. That Monainji did not understand that document, that the copies that were produced uh, were not enough for Monainji. So, uh, 
this is also a function of a, a multifaceted agencies within the government yes. to deal with this thing called civic uh, education. education. Uh, our constitution also provides at Article 10 that uh, there should be public participation, not just a matter of uh, passing bills through the county assemblies or to, through the national assembly. People must sit down and be made to understand what is contained in all of these legal documents. Because at the end of the day, the decisions that are, shall come from those documents will affect them directly. So civic education is a very important thing. Maybe to touch a bit on BBI that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, we saw BBI, we saw what uh, the High Court ruled on BBI, we saw what the uh, Court of Appeal ruled on BBI, and now we are seeing BBI headed to the Supreme Court. We saw uh, Attorney General Kiara Kariuki in the Supreme Court appealing again uh, the, against the ruling of the uh, Court of Appeal. Yeah. Do we st uh, does it stand a chance in the Supreme Court? Because uh, if at all they follow the same constitution that was used in the High Court, the same constitution that was used in the Court of Appeal, are we supposed to expect a different result from the Supreme Court? This is uh, perhaps a very tricky question, uh, but the issue is uh, I don't agree with the decision uh, from the High Court, neither do I agree with the decision at the Court of Appeal. Simply because uh, the courts uh, are trying to say that it is so difficult to amend the constitution. In fact, what the court appreciated BBI to have tried to do was to uh, repeal the old constitution, which BBI was not meant to do that. BBI was about amendments. And if you talk about amendments, we go to Article 255, 256 and 257. It is simple as collecting signatures, uh, getting a suggestion, reducing it into a bid, submitting the same to IBC, IBC to take it to the National Assembly. The, uh, while the debates are going on in the National Assembly, it goes to the County Assembly. Uh, uh, after it has been passed by the County Assemblies, it comes back uh, for approval at the, at the National Assembly, then presidential assent. It is as simple as that. But then, the, whatever the High Court and the Court of Appeal are saying is that uh, amending a constitution involves a forced step. Right. And they are saying that there are some people that are excluded from the process of amending the constitution. Okay. They are saying the president is not our njiku. Now the question that, that I ask our viewers tonight is look at that bundle of document that the BBI secretariat presented to IBC. Yes. Tell me whether Wanjiku can afford that kind of enterprise. It is impossible. So in a nutshell they are saying that we cannot change the constitution. But if you read our constitution, uh, there's something in the constitution called the preamble. The preamble says that we have enacted that constitution for ourselves and to our future generation. Right. You know very well that the things that your fathers did previously that you don't like. Right. For instance, in our community, we used to have things like wife inheritance. Today we can't do such things. So if we had such entrenched in the constitution, yes. Are we not allowed to change it? <laughs> but the courts are saying that we cannot change the constitution. Yes, so that's why I don't agree with it. And in fact, I am hopeful that the Supreme Court will overturn the decision of the High Court. But uh, the decision of the High Court and the decision of the Court, of, the Court Appeal, of Appeal, yes. was it against changing the constitution or was it about the procedure that was used uh, in coming to bring to these uh, you know, amendments to this constitution? It, 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 it involved the procedure and also the document itself. They said that the, 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 the proposed amendments yes. were unconstitutional. For instance, they said that those amendments touched on the basic structure of the constitution. So if you change the basic structure of the constitution, then that amendment becomes unconstitutional. Right. That's what they were saying. And you see, uh, terms like basic structure, some people consider them to be so foreign. Yeah. Because they're saying that if you cannot touch the basic structure, then what, what you are now rendering them to become is what we call eternity clauses. They're supposed to stick there forever. Secondly, they also challenge the, the procedure. For instance, in some county assemblies, there were no public participation. Yes. That's what they were saying. Secondly, they said that if you look at the journey that we've had with our constitutional making process, well, for example, the BOMAS draft, it involved people assembly, constituent assembly. In BBI, there was nothing like that. So they challenged both the procedure and also the text involved in that amendment.
Shadrach, uh, I think we have a lot to discuss on this BBI. We should make a date with you to discuss, you know, something on BBI another day. Yeah. Now, maybe as, as we wind up, in about two minutes, yeah. I'd want you to have a final saying, final remarks to the youth as we are headed to the next year's general election. What could be your advice to the youth? Uh, my advice to is, is simple. The youths of Kenya, it's time. Run for office. Believe in yourself. Support one another. Because as they say, Ujana ni moshi. Ukenda haurudi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shadrach, for allocating your time to be with us tonight. Now, uh, maybe we are st we, we, we should plan to, you know, have at least another talk, but probably on BBI yes. someday. Now, that has been Shadrach TJ Omondi. He's told us much, much more on the youth agenda. We'll be taking a very short break here on KUTP Primetime News. We still have much for you. So keep it right here. See you in a moment.